Well, welcome, welcome to the Wide Awake News Radio Show live with Charlie McGlath, who is absent today. So, Postscan72, better known as the Vulcan and Demcad, are here to kick things off today on Charlie's behalf in his absence. Um, boy, I tell you, it's uh, been a couple weeks since the last time that I've been on here. And I have to say that quite a lot has happened. Let's see, the last time we talked, we were talking about some of the main events of the day that was transpiring. And I do recall that I mentioned to several people not to fall in love with precious metals. I also warned at that time that precious metals can go a lot further to the downside because both gold and silver are what is called a bear market. I did Hello. warn about that. Ah, Demcad, there he is. Yeah, I was going to ask you, uh, how long can we expect that to happen? Well, I was about to get to that. Okay. All right. <laughs> I was leading up to that. You beat me to it. You beat me to it. Okay. Um, basically, the situation is this, people. I wanted to lead in with this gold and silver and the precious metal complex conversation because there's been a lot of rumors swirling around the internet and a lot of falsehoods. And I just wanted to clear that up for, for people to understand what it is that we're dealing with and why, for the most part, what you're seeing happen in the precious metals has nothing to do with you. If you're a holder of physical gold and silver, what I'm about to say right now does not affect you in any way whatsoever, any way, shape, or form. The paper price market that we see traded on the COMEX has nothing to do with you physical holders, and I'm going to explain why that is. First of all, what you have to understand is that the futures contracts traded on the COMEX affect the buying and selling of the paper markets, but it also affects the physical markets as far as the daily trading and buying of selling. Now, the rumors that's been going around on the Internet is that the COMEX is about to go belly up. And the reason why these rumors are spreading because people who don't know what they're talking about is uh, spreading misinformation, not necessarily on purpose, but just because they think that 1 plus 1 equals 2 but not necessarily when it comes to uh, the futures markets. And what I mean by that is the exchanges have been around a lot longer than all of us, okay? When they first started trading, we weren't even born yet. And they're going to be here long after we're gone. They're not going anywhere, okay? The futures market exists for a purpose. It is a, it is a market that if we didn't have a futures market, pretty much none of us would be able to afford to eat or do anything if we didn't have a futures market. You wouldn't be able to get loans. You wouldn't be able to do anything. You wouldn't be able to buy a house, buy a car, forget it. You wouldn't be able well, to do anything. How is that? The, re the reason being is because the futures markets hedge and insulate manufacturers and buyers and makers of goods and services. For example, a farmer is planting his soybeans. He mm -hmm. wants to sell his soybeans on the open market. The price right now for soybeans may be far less than what it will take him to break even. So the futures markets were created to bring in the speculators to act as a cushion between the producers and the manufacturers of those goods and services. So without speculators in the market, you don't have a market. And you wouldn't be able to get prices on things. It would be like basically, um, uh, here's a good example. Picture going into Walmart every day okay. and instead of prices on the shelves, every, every piece of clothing and food has a ticker symbol underneath of it telling nice. you what the price Excellent. is as of this second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. That's, uh, that's what it would be because there would be no price discovery. So the price will be whatever they say it is, whenever they want it to be. And no one will be able to afford to eat. There will be no one taking the other side of the risk or acting as a um, as liquidity to the market. 
that's why we had the prices be lower. No, they'd be higher because there'll be there will be no one to come in and take the other side or hedge the producer or the maker of their goods and services. So they they, they wouldn't have to sell. They can but sell if at any price. Nobody afford it, then they wouldn't be able to sell it, and then it wouldn't be a market at all. So they it would have to be a, a rate that somebody could actually. Afford. Then many people would starve. More people would starve. <laughs> but they'll lose money. So I mean, the market forces will sort of pull it to something. I, no. Is it is it has never really been a free market by the academic definition of free market. The market has always been in bed with the federal government because the federal government comes in and acts as a guarantor to make sure that import and export with foreign nations takes place. For example, um, when we're talking about uh, like soybeans again, okay. Okay. Soybeans may, may go limit up tomorrow, uh, for example. I'm not saying that it's going to, I'm just using an example. Yeah. Let's say soybeans go, goes limit up tomorrow. It was like, what high in the world did soybeans go limit up? I, I don't understand. Looking at, the, uh, looking at the, the acreage reports and blah, 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 supply and demand, it, that shouldn't have happened. But then the news comes out saying, oh, China wanted to buy X amount of, uh, of, uh, of soybeans. That's why it went up. All right. Okay. So the futures markets also act. Um, and import and export interests as part of, believe it or not, GDP for each and every nation that is a part of that whole complex. All right, not to die, not to get off topic so much, but I, I want I want people to understand. Back yeah, to the COMEX. Point. The COMEX is going nowhere. Okay, here's why. Everyone thinks that because the price of gold and silver has been getting crushed lately and you can't find any physical when you go on the internet and, and, and go to some of these dealers, you can't, you can't get anything and the premiums are through the roof, blah, 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 blah. Okay, here's the thing. The reason why that has nothing to do with the COMEX is this. What most people who don't know because they don't trade futures and they don't know anything about the market, they make these futures markets so that you can actually take delivery if you want to or not. 99.9% .9 of all speculators trade the paper back and forth. We're just, we're just in and out of the markets. We're not taking delivery. You cannot just all of a sudden decide because you bought, uh, you went long gold futures at 900 and let's say today now here it is, here it is at 1374 you want to you want to have it um, delivered to your door. It doesn't work like that. You have to fill out special paperwork ahead of time when you open your account stating that this is what you want to do ahead of time before you even get into the market. In addition to that you have to also pay for storage and interest and it, uh, on top of having this stuff delivered to you. So the rumor that, oh, what if everyone decides they're going to take delivery and they don't have enough to deliver doesn't work like that. Okay. Um, the amount of deliverables has never been overwhelmed on, on the market. They know exactly who each and every player is and what the intentions are. All futures contracts are settled in cash by the last trading day. As a matter of fact, we have to be out of the market and roll over to new futures contracts prior to the expiration of the current futures contract that you're in. So, so there's never a risk of default on the COMEX so they can't deliver something. Okay, never happened. So, okay, so I'm going to ask you, the bottom line, what can we expect in the futures market and what can we expect for real gold and silver? What are we going to see in the market for in the foreseeable future, I don't know, the next six months, I mean, what are you expecting? Of course, nobody's going to be 100% sure because variables uh, cause things to change as well. But uh, what are some things we should be looking for at, uh, in the coming six months? Okay. You want the truth? You can't handle the truth. I absolutely want to know. You can't handle the truth. You know, I asked that because I, I want to get to the bottom line. Because I, mean, I, I know that's all what right, a lot of people wondering when they're hearing all this. Oh, you're going to get to it as soon as we get back. So we're on <laughs> Wide Awake Radio. I'm Demcad, and I'm here co-hosting with Dex. Saved by the bell. Welcome back right. to Wide Awake Radio. We're here with Demcad and Dex. Go ahead. I asked him before we went on to this commercial break, what can we expect in the next... I don't know, six to 12 months. So what can we expect in the immediate future for gold and silver? 
in the in the futures market and uh, as far as uh, real physical silver, what can we expect? Okay, uh, as we discussed during the break, the profit targets, all things being equal, on gold and silver are as follows. For the silver, all things being equal, if we continue in this bear market downtrend, the 12 to 18 month price target for silver is eight dollars and fifty five cents. Eight dollars and fifty five cents. Yes, eight dollars and fifty five cents. And wow. and for um, gold, the price target is eight hundred and forty four dollars. So essentially, we're going to a ten to one ratio with gold and silver. I mean, it, it, if those, if we say in the bear market. Well, the thing is. Well, not ten to one. No, I thought I was thinking eighty. Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not even that. That's that's an, that's still incredible. Uh, wow. Right. Sorry, go ahead. I just, I'm. You still got me at the eight dollars. Yeah, if it was eighty dollars, eighty to eight hundred, then it'll be ten to one. But never mind. Well, there's uh, more. Eight dollars. Wow. Yeah. Uh, crude oil is also bearish right now, and if this continues. The 12 to 18 month price target on crude oil is $47 a barrel. And let's see, continuing. Uh, How much? Uh, that would be $47 a barrel if the bear market continues in the, um, in the crude oil. As far as the U.S. dollar, if the bullish sentiment in the U.S. dollar continues, the 12 to 18 month price target there is 89 89.80. For the U.S. dollar, and right now we're at eighty-two sixty-nine. So yeah, things can get pretty interesting here real quick, uh, oh. depending on um, how this thing plays out. Uh, unfortunately, though, if that happens and the dollar does beef up like that, that means that Europe is falling apart. So, and what I see is that Europe is going to do much better than our dollar. I see the dollar going the other way, and I see the 12 to 18 month price target on the dollar, if I'm correct, going to 73.12, which would put the euro at the next 12 to 18 months at 153 or just shy of 154. So that would be explosive, but then it would be hard to eat because then that means soybeans would be at 22.60. That's $22.60 a bushel. Yeah. I know. <laughs> okay, so I, I was I was loving the part where you're talking about how gasoline is probably going to be going down, or crude oil is going down. So I, I like the idea of traveling across the states. Now that might actually be feasible with the gas, co the, the cost of gas drops. Correct. And you're talking about uh, silver dropping to about eight dollars. If it drops below ten dollars, that's a that's a wonderful buying opportunity. Well, I mean, for me, I'm not telling anybody what to do, but for me, uh, that would be an incredible buying opportunity. If it went down to that rate, but you're also mentioning that just because it goes down to that rate, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to be able to get the silver at ten dollars or eight dollars because there's a premium. It'll be probably a twenty or thirty dollar premium attached to it. Yes. Why? They have to make money. Yeah, I mean twenty or thirty dollars an ounce. Supply and demand. They already know that if it gets down to that to that level, everybody and their mother is going to want to buy those coins. They're not going to be able to keep up with it. So the way to to offset that is the premiums. And look at them now. What are they, like six or seven bucks now? Premiums? Some places? It's off the hook, is it not? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, but... Someone yeah. posted that the other day in the uh, in the trade room. Someone posted, like, what was it, what, six or seven buck markup? That's that's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, but it's $23 right now. I mean, if you... Exactly. Product, if it's but if six or seven dollars now... You, yeah, do the math on that. If, it, if it's six or seven dollar markup now at twenty dollars, what is it going to be at eight? You see what I'm saying? Well, they will sort of defeat the purpose of buying them at that low rate if it drops to that rate. You know, because if you can't buy them, if, if gold and silver is at I don't know ten dollars, but they want to try to charge you what? How much of a premium? Twenty dollar premium? This is really irrelevant to you. Well, see again, and then you're going to have people freaking out because silver drops so much. It's not about price, though. Like, you see, again, see, we're talking about two, two different things. We're talking about the physical metal, mm -hmm. and we're talking about the paper market. Now, okay. I gave you the 855 on the paper. Okay. You know, you know, unfortunately, that spot price is going to be pretty much neck on with the, with the futures price. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know that the markup is going to come and good luck getting it. Even all right, let's let's just say for for argument's sake, let's just say that there is no super markup. So let's say I'm right and it's it's 12 months later you and I are on the radio again talking okay. and silver's at 855 today, right? Yeah. You and I both know even with a $5 markup, there ain't going to be no more silver left. <laughs> because we would all be competing to get that silver. We would sell everything we own to get that silver. Well, we not because we know it's not going to stay at that price. As well, soon I as I sell everything I own, but it would definitely be a good buying opportunity. So, as yeah. soon as it sneezes, the economy would collapse at that point, <laughs> and you would want to have as much silver and gold as you can. So it would be fierce competition to get that gold and that silver. And you and I both know we would we would get that gold and silver. While everyone else is, you know, going to McDonald's and buying a, a Big Mac, we'll be buying gold and silver. <laughs> <laughs> buying a Big Mac, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, I, I hear you. So anyway, uh, uh, moving on. Um, so okay. but we, we have dealt with that issue. So we know that the 12 to 18 month target, if we stay in a if we stay in a bear market, that's what we're talking about. All right. The other side. All right, set and calls here on Wide Awake Radio. Welcome back to Wide Awake News, live with uh, Demcad and the Vulcan in the absence of Charlie McGrath. Long live the Charlie. Um, we were talking about, over the break, this whole uh, Boston massacre, false flag, military psyop the thing that really gets me is that when i explained this in the trading room the other day the first thing i said was guys get ready because they're going to use this to um what's the word i'm looking for uh they're going to use this to go ahead and say okay you know what let's go after the guns some people said no, that's not true because they would they would have made this a gun staged event, not a bombing event. And I said no, you're 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 mistaken because don't forget, our government loves to draft these these thick bills and things and then stuff them um, with all these secret hidden agendas. Obamacare. So then, yeah. So then when you pass the Obamacare, oh by the way, you just agreed uh, to make Obama your Lord and Savior. You know what I'm saying? Hitting, <laughs> hitting in the text somewhere on page 3,900, paragraph 35. You know what I'm saying? And all so, the people who voted for it said, oh, well, we didn't see that part. We didn't get a chance to read it. Exactly. Why the hell did you sign the damn, why the hell did you support the damn bill in the first place if you didn't actually read it? Think about this. We got a room full of lawyers, hundreds of lawyers, who signed something they didn't read? Come <laughs> on. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> These are lawyers, man. Come on now. They charge people three, four, five hundred dollars an hour to tell them not to do that and then they go and do it. Whatever. So here's my thing, man. You know, this is the part that really gets me, um, Reggie. And uh, uh, ah okay. Today what happens? After the market closes, Obama comes out and says, Let's address the gun issue. He didn't say let's ad- let's address the explosives used in the in the Boston bombing. He said let's address what the gun issue. He used this staged event as a springboard to come in and strong arm everyone with a dyma- a dynamic speech on gun control. Now, I got to be fair. Obama has to be the smoothest speaker I've ever heard in my life. And I've heard a lot of them. The man is tight. However, the error in the speech today came when he set up he set up a straw man and then he went ahead and knocked it down. He tried to raise the issue of you don't want crazy people to be able to legally buy a gun. You don't want a convicted felon to legally go out and buy a gun. That is not the issue. The issue is what does the Bill of Rights and Constitution have to say about the right to keep and bear arms? Why do we keep and bear arms? The answer, to protect ourselves from tyranny. That's what it's for. It's not to hunt. It's not to fish. It's not even for self-defense. You have a firearm to 
be able to defend yourself from tyranny, from them. So he, he confused the issues. He made it an issue on mental health and convicted felons getting firearms. Okay, here's why I believe that it was a stupid and, and dumb speech. First of all, all of the weapons that were ever used in any of these massacres from the theater massacre to Columbine, all, whatever you want to you, you say, illegally purchased firearms. And the ones that were legally were registered to another person. So you can basically say that those firearms were stolen. Okay, let's, uh, let, let's understand that. There has never been a time where a bill or piece of legislation saved a life. A criminal, if he wants to commit a crime, is going to commit a crime and you can't stop him. That's why it's called a crime. Why? Because it's illegal. <laughs> do, you, do, you think a do you think a felon or a murderer was going to go down and legally purchase a handgun that's registered with the serial numbers and everything else and then walk out of the store and then shoot someone to death? So they can easily sense. trace the gun right back to him. Whatever. It makes no sense. I mean, when you're a law-abiding citizen, you have to get. Uh, when you buy a gun, you're always taking. You're always filling out paperwork, and you're always uh, get going through some type of background check. I've been through. I don't know how many background checks. So the idea that you always, you know, the, the criminals can just get a gun without a background check type of nonsense is being spread. It's just absolutely false. And 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 the speech is ridiculous because it's coming from a guy who, under his watch. Operation Fast and Furious was was something created by the ATF, right? And these guys intentionally encouraged gun dealers to sell guns to cartel members, to criminals. They brought them across the border, and they got hundreds of people killed, including U.S. Border Patrol agent Brian Terry. Now, this is the same government that's gotten people killed with those same type of weapons, with their same irresponsible operations. And that's just one of uh, many operations so now, after that, they're going to try to come in and tell us what we should be doing with firearms and, and put more restrictions on our right to bear arms. It, the irony is just absolutely incredible. And the thing is, people are so ignorant. They don't know about Operation Fast and Furious because they don't really hear about it. They don't hear about how the Obama administration actually encouraged, criminal, encouraged gun dealers to sell these same type of guns that they want taken out of our hands to actual criminals. Now, it is completely irrational and insane. You know, all these mass shootings, where do they happen? Gun-free zones. Something created by the government, some type of legislation created by the government to make areas safer. They've obviously failed time and time again. These, You, you look at the Aurora, the Aurora Theater in Colorado, gun-free zone. The, the shooter went by five or six different theaters just to get to that gun-free zone theater where he didn't even go into the lobby. He went in through the back door and shot up a whole bunch of people, and not one person shot back. Not one person had a gun to fire back at that gun-free zone. Okay, Never mind the fact that he was seeing a psychiatrist a month ahead of time, and his shrink actually reported him to the campus police as being a, quote, homicidal threat. Homicidal threat to the public. Dangerous. What did the, what did, what did the uh, campus police do? Absolutely nothing. Okay, they, I think they dis they. Uh, disabled his uh, ID card. There was no criminal investigation. They didn't report it to any other authorities until after the guy shot 70 people. Shot and then killed 12 people. That's the only time they reported it. Okay? The, the psychiatrist who received threats from this guy in person and also through text messages, what did she do? She just told the campus police and that was it. She didn't have the guy committed. Essentially, she didn't do her job properly. The police didn't do their job properly. But now we're supposed to be looking at law-abiding citizens and taking and actually blaming them and making their lives harder and actually taking away some of their rights because you know it's all in the it's all in the in the, in the good of keeping the children safe. Well, did the president keep the children safe when when they, when the ATF put those guns out on the street and they, when they had massacres? There was a massacre with a bunch of teenagers at a birthday party in Mexico. Again, people don't hear about that. So the hypocrisy is disgusting. It is disgusting, and and you and you make you make a good point. You know, getting back to the Fast and Furious thing. Okay, so let me get this straight. They want to regulate crazy people getting guns, but our legislators are the craziest people, and yet they're out there shipping guns to other crazy people. The but cartels. that's okay, though. That that's oh, okay. Yeah, the cartels, yeah. Okay. But that's okay. But they want to make sure crazy people don't get guns. Right. We had a clear case in Colorado where. 
the mental health in, in this, uh, in the industry or whatever the hell you want to call it, they didn't do their job. He had a psychiatrist that didn't do her job properly, in my opinion. She really thought he was a violent threat. Why didn't she report him to the city police? Why didn't the campus police report him? Why wasn't there some type of criminal investigation? He, he had a bunch of so-called professionals not doing their job, right? But they, they didn't want to talk about creating more legislation to, to get guns out of the hands of crazy people. You know, but the, what about the people making the legis legislation? How crazy is it to actually tell gun dealers to sell guns to cartel members and you have no way of tracking the guns? Well, here's the thing, and this is what is going bad. This right here is going to go over the heads of a lot of people because they don't think the way the crazy people think. And I'll address it on the other side of the break. This is Wide Awake Radio. I'm Dimcad, and I'm co-hosting with Dex. We'll be right back. The number is 877-342-6673. Again, 877-342-6673. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to Wide Awake Radio. I'm Dimcad. I'm also here with Dex, and we have a caller from Hong Kong. What welcome. up, Hong Kong? Hello? Yeah. Hello, Ben Cass. Hello, Chief. How's that? Hey, what's up, hey. player? Congratulations again to you, man. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I uh, just want to give the folks some updates on the physical on over in, here in Asia. Mm -hmm. And just tell you very plain and simple. There's no more Hong Kong gold to sell. Okay. This past weekend, the price plummeted. Uh, a lot of gold dealers see like 30 20 to 30 percent jumps in volume. People from China uh, uh, open up their pockets buying. So, like you guys said, uh, the premium's going to be so much that uh, I don't know. It's going to be ast astronomical. Okay. So, no more physical. You can't. You can't locate any physical in Hong Kong right now. Well, there is, but the the order is just tremendous. Um, people like the dealers are really working hard try to find the gold that they can and try to sell it to the, to the mainland folks. So, <laughs> wow. It's hard to... What about your markups? Is there any large markups? Oh, or yes, there is, there is. There is. Yes, there is. I mean, you're talking about a premium of almost uh, 2,000 Hong Kong dollars premium in and what out. Would that be, what would that be American? Oh, but I would say two, two, three hundred. Two, three hundred dollar markup? Hell no. Yes, Whoa. there is. He just confirmed what I said. I didn't even know that. <laughs> Post scan, the Vulcan strikes again. Did, did you hear that, folks? My I'm man just said two, three hundred dollar markups to get yourself some gold if you're in Hong Kong. Coming to United States near you. Forget it. That's did, I not, a rip -off. did I not just finish saying that? Did I not just finish saying that? Yeah, um, you did. All right. So now you see that what I say, even though it sounds incredible, is not always just so off the hook. Oh, man. All right. Uh, so what else you want to tell us, man? How, how else? What else is going on you see over there right now? Well, I, I can see people are still buying for metals. Um, and over here, the China market. Oh, yeah. I have to say, also say about the, 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 the bird food. Um, it, it's, it has been okay. Uh, but the thing is, I think the um, the Boston thing event is somewhat covered a bit, so that people are off their minds for a while. Uh, but it's just a lot of things going on here, and just uh, people are being washed up by the mainstream. <laughs> what about this whole thing with your with the the China economy uh, coming to a grinding halt? That's what was reported uh, in the uh, on CNBC the other day when the the numbers came out for for China. Are you seeing um, are you seeing the, the signs of that on the street? Is it is it trickling down yet? Of course, I, I mean it, it has been confirmed. I mean, it, as long as the U.S. and the the, the Europe are not buying, the Chinese factories are, are, are on a standstill. Um, but right now they're just covering up because of the new president just coming see. So I mean, it, it's still under control, but on. But there, there are some people are out of jobs. There, there are factory owners are, are really killing themselves because of the not enough orders on the Europe and the U.S. side. 
Uh, and so what, what about this deflationary to... issue? Yeah. Uh, what about deflation? They, they said that you guys are pretty much in full blown dis, uh, deflation over there in China now. Is that is that true? Are, are you are you seeing that? Well, it, well, it has been going on because of the real estate bubble burst. I mean, since I would say two years from now. So uh, it it I mean the capitals from China now is somewhat slow, but it, it, it it's not a collapse collapse yet, level yet. So it, yeah. it, it, I would say <laughs> yeah I would say somewhat you can see people are feeling the pain, but not the maximum pain yet. Okay, but the okay. bird flu has somewhat affect a, a lot of people because now people get getting psyched up because they remember uh, 10 years ago with SARS. So uh, people are really vigilant about it. Uh, but right now, it's still kind of like uh, nothing's happened yet, but we, we'll see, we'll see what, what's happening. Yeah. Just a wow. real situation. Well, thanks for that update, man. I appreciate yeah. it. Even as we speak, uh, gold and silver taking a dive again while we talk, guys. Not looking good. All right, this is Dimcad, and I'm here with Dex. We're co-hosting in place of Charlie McGrath. The number is 877-342-6673. Again, 877-342-6673. Call in, share your thoughts. You were talking about what they're going to do with the guns and the background checks. Yes, um, thanks for getting me back on track there, Dimcad. <laughs> okay, here, here's the thing that's going over the head of people, Okay. The issue is not about the background checks. Most places have not all already do that, all right, in some way or form, shape or form. If it's not a license, it's a background check or both or whatever, okay? That's not the issue. The reason why they are pushing this and using to reel people in, talking about the mentally ill and the, and the convicted felons, they're using fear so that everyone says, okay, let's do this. What they want to do is to create a database, a software program, wherein everyone has to register through it in order to purchase legally a firearm, okay? Once they put this program into place, then no one will have a firearm. They want to create a no-fly list for firearms. That's basically what this program is. And one of their buddies up there on Capitol Hill is going to get the no-bid contract to implement and create the software to do it. And once you're on this program, you better believe if you're a Christian, if you're a libertarian, if you ever went voted for Ron Paul or went to any kind of um, uh, uh, a rally, um, anything like that. Uh, if you believe in chipochondras and the Death Star and chemtrails, you will not get a gun. You can trust and believe that. If this yeah. thing is implemented, say goodbye to your guns. They're going to go the back doorway to outlaw guns by way of default saying that, oops, uh, our MRS system came back and said, uh, you got a hit on you. Sorry, you can't get a, you, I can't sell you this gun. I'm so sorry. Here's a 1 800 number you can call if you have any questions. Uh, thanks for stopping by. That's what's going to happen. And that's why we needed to get rid of people like John McCain in the Senate, Lindsey Graham, individuals like that who are going along with this scheme. You know, so, it, and it never, these people will never stop. They will never stop going to the lowest of the lowest to try to justify their anti gun agenda. And it's really about control. You know, it's right. not about keeping kids safe or anything. They want to use a crisis so they can control people. They want to go after firearms. And once they get rid of the Second Amendment, I'm going to tell you, once they get rid of the Second Amendment, Say goodbye to all the other stuff because they already have free speech zones. When people when people protest at the G8 uh, meetings or whatever, they sort of move them off into this area miles away from the actual meeting, and they call it a a free speech zone, as if the uh, First Amendment doesn't apply anywhere else but the area which the government says it applies. Right. So once they get rid of the Second uh, Amendment, once they start, what's and it's going to take them probably a generation or two because what with the way they're conditioning the young people in the schools. Uh, they don't know their rights. Okay, they don't know their rights at all. So they're going to be willing to give up all of their rights just to get uh, certain programs or whatever. So once we get to that point, once they get rid of the Second Amendment, I'm telling you, everything else will just go right by the wayside. It won't matter what you have to say. 
It won't matter uh, what you think about the Fifth Amendment, uh, protection against uh, self-incrimination. It won't matter about unreasonable searches and seizures. It, it won't really matter what you think about that. You won't. All those other amendments will go right by the wayside because it won't be anything you can do about it because you won't be, even be able to, to defend yourself. Exactly, and that's what they want. See, they don't want anyone to defend themselves. See, here's the thing. We know that you can always get things illegally, okay? Oh, yeah. And illegal just means the government doesn't get a piece of the action. That's why it's considered illegal. So what happens is this. Okay, fine. I go out. I purchase me a gun off the street. You know, I walk down the street, go see Day Day and them, get me a gun. All right? Uh, a knucklehead decides he's going to break into my house, and I shoot his head off. Even though it's self-defense, I go to prison for the rest of my life because it's illegal for me to have that handgun. Even though this dude rolled up on in my spot and I checked him, I have to now go to prison. And if it's in a state that has the death penalty, like unfortunately where I am, they might go ahead and fricassee me for protecting my family. Because the gun that I had was gathered illegally. So then as far in, in the eyes of the law, they get to get rid of two scum buckets for the price of one. Isn't that whack? Hello? Did we just go off the air? You think you have a right? You think you have an opinion? Is anything? You think you, have, you, you think you actually own any property? They're going to be in complete control, and that's really what it comes down to, complete control. Uh, but speaking of which, I want to talk about other aspects of control and really uh, what is it? I know the government is uh, spending a lot of money on ammunition. I know the government is spending a lot of money on armored vehicles, especially the Department of Homeland Security. And uh, I, I want to know what else are they preparing for because I've been researching a lot of the stuff, uh, underground bases, underground uh, government facilities and all this other stuff. You know, and to me, it seems almost as if these people are preparing for some big event that I can't really put my finger on. I don't know if it's economic. I don't know if it's financial. I don't know if it's earth changes. And this is just something that really interests me. And I, I don't know if it's uh, something you really spend a lot of time focusing on, but uh, it seems to me the government's preparing for something, what, whether it be the system falling apart or what. That's the, that's the million dollar question. It's like, what are they preparing for? We know they are. We know that they purchased all those bullets. We know that they're moving tanks and things throughout the states. We know that um, the military has has been uh, on hand uh, at these events, even in Boston. Um, it's not a coincidence that whenever these situations take place, there's always a government military building right across the street, like that library. So none mm -hmm. of this stuff is by chance, man. It's not that much coincidence on the earth. Things happen the way they plan them to happen so they can get by the legislation they want to get by, period. Psy op. All right, so we're going to sort of expand upon that and some other issues you want to talk about. What are we going to cover in the next segment? In the next segment, you'll have to stick around to find out. Let that show. Hey, welcome to Wide Awake Radio. I'm Dim Cat. I'm here with Dex, and I am very excited about our upcoming topics. Uh, of course, there's the Boston bombing situation, and there's really no official suspects. No one's really been arrested. Over 100 people hurt, about three people killed. Uh, people have lost arms and legs, especially legs. It was a really gruesome scene there in downtown Boston. Uh, there were reports that they were working on a drill before the event. So a lot of people are sort of, sort of suspicious about that. Uh, the president's, as usual, using this uh, this crisis as an opportunity to push his gun control agenda. And the man, he doesn't want anybody to have any guns in this country. The, the guy, I don't see how the guy even got elected in this country. I, I, he, he seems like the complete opposite of what America should really be about. But this man, he won two elections against candidates who shared uh, most of his values anyway. So it just goes to show you what we have in this country. We have a lack of a choice. We have uh, 
a situation where you know morality, you know, the way people treat one another, it's it, it's discouraging when you see that. But it, there are some good news. There are some good stories. Even in that Boston crisis, even that Boston bombing, people did work hard to sort of help out those people. Even though there were bombs going off, people were rushing to help one another. So even though we see a lot of negative things in this world, uh, you, you hear about a lot of shootings, a lot of robberies in certain areas. You know, even in the anti-gun Chicago, <laughs> there's still some goodness in humanity. So I just want to sort of remind people of that because sometimes I can lose focus on that. You know, yeah, I, I spend too so much time uh, looking at all the things that are going wrong in the world that sometimes I sort of forget about the good people out there, and there are some good people. So, hey, Dex, we're going to talk. Well, before we were talking a lot about. Uh, the gun control issue we're talking about how they're going to use this so-called background bill the background check bill to go after guns and we're also talking about the bossing bombing and we're also talking about gold and silver and right now gold and silver is getting wiped out it looks like an aftermarket and i want to talk a little bit about earth changes later on but uh please give us an update on that man update on which one uh definitely the the silver before we move on okay the all silver right. and gold yeah, silver is uh, and gold is both collapsing again. Uh, at one point, gold was down forty dollars just a minute ago. It's now bounced back. It's only down thirty-five dollars, but we are getting uh, to the low thirteen hundred handle now on the gold. Silver just hit twenty-two forty-three, and it's now bounced to twenty-two fifty-five. It's down almost a dollar. It's down seventy-five cents now. Not looking really good. Uh, equity market is also pulling back too now. Uh, stock index futures have turned negative and of course you also have here's the weird thing the US dollar is negative and your commodities are negative your crude oil is negative all of the metals in the metal complex just turned negative natural gas is also negative and the euro is negative everything is negative right now unbelievable um, anywho at this stage, we could wake up tomorrow morning to some 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 stuff. We don't know what's going down, except for these prices. Sometimes price can lead current events. Other times, current events <laughs> follow the price. Um, another thing to be noted today, too, just off the cuff, I just re remembered it. Bank of America's earnings were incredibly dismal. Their reports today were whack, and so the stock was punished. Uh, as I said before, you want to do your due diligence when it comes to Bank of America. All right, moving on. Um, those of you who don't know, if you go to pollscan.blogspot.com, that's where I post all of my uh, news sources when I talk about uh, unbelievable things and people like to fact check me. You can go to the blog and I always put everything up there. Also, keep in mind, too. Things that I talk about sometimes leads the news but by about three to five days. After that, you usually start seeing things reported, and then you'll see that I'm only half crazy, not all the way crazy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as for earth changes, man, we have some, a biggie uh, as far as earth changes this week. We have multiple back-to-back -back earthquakes in Oklahoma. Unbelievable. And here's the thing about it. Before all that stuff happened, what, what, do we, what do we know? We know that it had to have been harp or some type of harp-related situation. And the reason why we believe so is because this time, now you have scientists getting nervous for the first time in a long time. Residents and scientists now are worried that the New Madrid fault Maybe waking up. So, what you does have that mean? Earthquakes rattling Missouri. You have earthquakes multiple back to back in Oklahoma. I think it was like three or four major ones back to back. So um, what if it does? What does that mean? What are what the it, possible implications? Well, here's the thing some of the possible impl implications are as follows Harp, number one. Number two, uh, the uh, fracking. That's number two. Number three, the earth is dying. You add all that up together, what do you have? 
a messed up situation. I believe that all the above has caused irreparable damage to our ozone, to our atmosphere, to our stratosphere, to our ironic sphere, to the oceans. Man has done a very good job really fracking up the country and the world and the planet as we know it. Seriously, our oceans are dying. They're, they're, they're tearing up uh, the atmosphere with all the chemtrail spraying. It's irreversible damage at this point. That's why you keep seeing these crazy, um, you know, tornadoes and uh, I mean, you got ice ages going on, you know, out in the Midwest. They can't seem to get spring. They have not had spring. They can't get a spring to happen. It's just freezing over there. Uh, it's, it's this craziness that's going on, man. And it's because of all the spraying. They're dropping just just tons of, you know, all these chemicals and playing around with the weather, trying to manufacture weather. Um, you know, it's, when, it, when, when it was first talked about years ago, it was all oh, a conspiracy theory. But now we know it's a fact. OK, it's already been proven that they are uh, geoengineering the weather. We know that we know so because they even went as far as to make futures contracts for trading the chemtrails. You can trade chemtrails on the exchanges now. Just type, if you don't believe me, type in cme.com, go to the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and you will see the dozens of uh, weather-related futures that you can trade. All right? So there you have it. It's there. It exists. Um, okay. And it's hurting the planet. It's causing the planet uh, a lot of irreparable damage. So many people have come on, have come out, doctors and uh, you know geologists and stuff. They 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 have they have already broke all this down. If you don't you don't trust me, you you can you can Google it and I'm sure you'll find what you need to find. You can go uh, to my to my blog where I've posted a lot of the stuff. But um, there was a guy. I have to get. I'm gonna have to get my information on this one. There was a doctor that came on. Um, coast to coast with George Norrie and he was breaking down all the scientific facts regarding these chemtrails which I can't do here I'm, I'm not a geologist but the guy man I'm telling you he was dropping some science and you, you ain't gotta listen to me but you probably want to listen to the geologist yeah it was interesting <laughs> well it was interesting because I came across something uh, called Mars One it was some Dutch organization they were actually working on uh, creating some type of one-way trip. A company actually working on creating a one-way trip to Mars to build a community for sellers. And it, it just got me thinking, because they were thinking about launching this in 2018. They were accepting applications or whatever. And it, 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 it's really interesting because I, I kept thinking about, you know, how can a human race survive if it's just stuck on this one planet? You know, Stephen Hawkins was, was talking about that as well. He was talking about how the human race plans on surviving uh, much longer. It's going to have to move on to other planets because it's just a matter of time before something catastrophic happens here on this planet. So I really I really like this topic. We're going to stay on this and jump on some other topics as well. I'm Dumbcad. I'm here with Dex, Wide Awake Radio, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Wide Awake News Radio Show with Charlie McGrath. And I am Vulcan here with Reggie hosting in Charlie's absence. Well, if you're just joining us, we have been dealing with earth changes so far, starting off with this uh, hour here. Um, a lot of things going down. We've been having multiple earthquakes in Oklahoma and tremors in Missouri and all this other stuff. And people want to know what's going on. Well, the thing that's going on is that man has destroyed the planet with his chemtrails and his fracking, destroying the oceans. You know, it's only a matter of time before a fish start washing up on shore dead after you're pouring billions of barrels of oil, dumping it into the ocean, uh, what did you expect to happen? No wonder Flipper can no longer swim and enjoy himself. Now he's washing up on shore, gasping his last breath, and looking at the guy up in the air flying the chemtrail plane, spraying, saying, curse you, 
Look what you've done to my house. Look what you've done to my ocean and my sea. And then the dolphin dies. See what you've done to Flipper? You're destroying Flipper. We have a call. Uh, Mike from Minnesota. Welcome. What up, Mike? Hey. What's up, Vulcan? Duck? Uh, what dumb up? kid. What's happening, man? I, I want to talk to you about your backpack. Oh, okay. Uh, I saw it on YouTube. Is, is that pretty comfortable humping, like, long-term? That uh, frame pack you got? The new one or the old one? Uh, I think it's kind of orange. It looks like 1970-ish. The orange one? The 1970-ish one? Well, I'm a big guy, so it was fairly, it was fairly comfortable for me. It was an external frame. One. But the one I'm working with right now doesn't have an external frame or internal frame. It's uh, it's, it's something similar to the Max Edition uh, type of okay. backpack. But, yeah, I found it at the Military Surplus Store. It was pretty comfortable. It's more comfortable. And I started to tone down the size and the weight of everything. And I also wanted a backpack that allowed me to sort of uh, fit in with the environment. It didn't really uh, capture law enforcement's attention. <laughs> well, this one probably would, though. It, it's uh, like Coyote Brown. But uh, Walmart has one. I guess they'll, in another month or so it will be back on the shelf. Cause it, well, let me, let me issue a warning about buying stuff at Walmart. It's not the highest quality stuff. And if you're talking about survival or bugging out, I'm not sure I want to rely on something that was uh, being sold at Walmart because a lot of times, even if you look at the same brands in other stores, the quality is better. And for some reason, you know, Walmart, they sort of have their certain requirements and they want to sell things at certain price points. And that sort of forces companies to cut corners. Right. I, I've, I've beat this up a little bit so far, and I'm really surprised because I goes 40 bucks, but it's uh, made by Field Line Tactical. It's okay. uh, a poly bag. It's called Alpha Ops. It's about close to 4,000 cubic inches. And being a poly bag, you can, you know, put uh, sustainment pouches on the outside. And, I mean, it's it's awesome. I mean, I, I something like that right now, but, yeah. But I've... I've I spent five years in the ground in Hawaii camping out, you know, and I guess that's another word for being homeless or whatever. I didn't, I didn't realize when I first went out there, I was in my 20s as young then, and it's a long time ago, and uh, I didn't realize how much it really cost to really live there. I mean, I had a job. I just couldn't afford rent. And so I, I camped out, you know, and so I got a bit of, you know, bushcrafting and camping experience uh, doing that, and, you know, I'm glad it was in good weather. And, uh, but, you know, I've went through a number of bags in that, but, you know, it's just between this one and, and there, there's another one I have that I use and, uh, so, so there you go. But as far as like all this, uh, oh heck, globaldisasterwatch.com, that's where you're going to find out on a daily basis, earthquakes anywhere in the world, uh, tornadoes, hurricanes, whatever. And, uh, but that's a great website. And as far as, like, when you start seeing all the rats going underground, you know, from Washington or whatever, then I think that's a pretty good sign that uh, things are ready to let loose. Uh, but this this whole thing with uh, <clears throat> the the complications of it, the new Madrid fault zone, I, I was looking at some uh, uh, maps of it, and that, and, I mean, it goes all the way up, and they have an offshoot, or whatever from it that literally goes into Michigan. It goes all the way across the state of Illinois, covers, uh, goes through a little piece of Indiana, and like ends in Michigan, like just maybe ten miles over the border. I mean, this this thing is huge. Hmm. Well, and, I, I really appreciate the website because I'm looking at it right now. I didn't know that they had a. Uh, 7.8 in uh, Iran, uh, around, along the border of Iran and Pakistan. Uh, so that's it's, pretty it's tremendous. So, so it's called Global Disaster Watch. Okay. Right. The other one, as far as uh, uh, hey, you know what? we're going to. Hey, you know, I hate to cut you off, but we're going to break right here. So, guys, try to hang in there. We'll be back. We'll continuing, continuing talking about Earth changes here on Wide Awake Radio with me, Dilcad, and Dex. Welcome back to Wide Awake Radio. I'm Demcad. I'm co-hosting with Dex, and we are talking about Earth changes. 
And we were talking about the idea of, you know, humans leaving the planet to start other colonies. I mean, it's possible if we can develop a, a dark matter type of uh, energy source that can propel, that can fuel a, an actual engine and, a, and the actual craft that can travel at the speed of light. But it would still take a very long time just to get to a lot of these star systems where they may have planets that it's close enough and farther enough and right, right the right distance away from the star for them to actually... Uh, maintain life they actually have the water and actually maintain human life it'll be pretty interesting it'll be one heck of a exploration it'll be one heck of a project and we're talking about mars one and some other stuff as well you know, but yeah I, it's going to take a, a while before humans are getting to the point where they're going to be able to expand onto other planets and i'm oh, sorry go ahead no i i just don't see that happening um yeah it, it's just not gonna, it's just not going to happen um, <laughs> for for myriads of reasons, that's not even their agenda. You know, that's what they want people to believe. That's not their agenda, man. Mm-hmm. the The agenda is to submit, to submit to whom, submit to them as a higher authority. In the end, what's going to end up happening is we're going to go into a situation where no one's going to be allowed to leave their local jurisdiction, much less travel to outer space. It's, it's, it's going to be too too volatile. Outer space is changing because the universe is dying. The planet is dying. The universe is dying. All right? Everything goes from, you know, order to chaos. Everything breaks down. You know, look at your laws of thermodynamics. That's how it goes. Things are starting to break down. And that's what's going to happen. That's why the New World Order in the, in the end is going to fail because everything that they've done to try to limit the participation of everyone who is not them is only going to come back and smack them in the face. Case in point, if we, if, if, you know, if we bomb North Korea, it's only a matter of time before that radiation falls back over here to us. So no one wins in a nuclear war. No one wins. You just work, make the planet even worse. Now, unfortunately, it's going to go down like that because it's already been predicted that that's what's going to happen. So we already know what's going to happen. We know that eventually it's not just going to be dolphins like Flipper washing up on shore, okay, and Shamu the whale. It's going to be the ocean dying, period. Our ocean is dying, and it's going to be dead not many years from now, period. That's why they've been talking about water crisis. There's no water crisis. There's never been a water crisis, okay? Man has always made his habitation near a creek, river, or stream, or ocean for that reason, okay? So that they don't have to travel too far to get water. Water's never really been a problem. The only reason why water, potable drinking water and potable water is a problem now is because of greedy manufacturers polluting the environment and capitalizing on the, 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 the water for themselves to use in their wasteful uh, factories, polluting factories, and then having the people in the surrounding villages die of thirst to the point where they can't even grow anything or have a garden because they're sucking up all the water from them. All right? This is a man-made event. The water crisis is a man-made event, okay? When God created the earth, he made it so that we have uh, water that comes from from the sky, hits the ground, turns back into vapor, goes back into the sky, and repeats itself, okay? We have oceans for that as well. So that there is not a problem, all right? The, the issue is we're the ones that's messing it up, okay? We have been messing it up. And greed has taken over so that uh, the ones who are wealthy and have all the money consolidate all the resources and keep it from the people who don't have those resources. That's why Jesus said the poor will always be with you. He didn't say the poor will always be with you because they're lazy. 
No, he was letting you know the poor is always going to be with you because of the sinful hearts of mankind that always seeks to enslave his brother. That's what we've always done since the beginning of time. We we seek to enslave one another. All right. That's that. That's how it is. It doesn't matter what government comes or goes. It's always someone who wants to rule. And the person that usually gets to rule is the one that has the most of the military presence behind them. Not necessarily the best people get to rule. That's where we are right now. So that's why we have these earth changes. All right. Now, granted, let's say that all the powers of the earth sung Kumbaya and held hands every day. Here's the thing. We would still go down this road. All right. Because, like I said, the laws of thermodyna thermodynamics say that things are breaking down. That's what's it's going to happen. All right. There's nothing we can do about that. All right. It, it is what it is. Ever since sin came into the world, everything has now been thrown into chaos. So the universe is groaning for its day of redemption and it's not going to be made right into the second coming. That's that. That's where we're at with this. And the evidence of it is all around you. Why do you think your commander in chief is so hostile toward Christians? Why do you think he said he wants to win the war against Christianity, i.e., win the war on Christmas? Where do you think that came from? All right, because he's a Muslim. All right, Muslims hate Jews and Christians. Oh, by definition. Uh, if you read the Quran, it does say so. Well, that doesn't I, mean I, that I, all Muslims. I, I, I don't care how you twist it. If you're a Muslim, you say you follow the Quran and the 20 something thousand different hadiths, eh, it's in there. Eh, yeah, well, there's, there's no way to get around it. There's a lot of things about gay people in the Bible, and still there's a lot of people who identify themselves as Christians who don't necessarily uh, hate gay people. So, I mean, just because uh, it's... No, no, see, no, no, no. You're not, you're not, you're not, you don't know. No. The Bible does not teach the hatred of anybody. It, it doesn't matter if you're gay or straight. That's not the issue. All right? You do not hate gay people. All right? You never, you don't, well, you can't, you know, the Bible is Jesus to hate gay people. And they use a lot of the stuff written in the Bible uh, that's uh, very anti-gay as their justification for hating gay people. All and right, just... all right. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. All right. The Bible does not teach hatred of anybody. What the Bible does teach is that human beings are sinful, fallen creatures. Yes. Where we are the only part of God's creation that rebelled. The animals didn't rebel. All right. Nature didn't rebel. The ocean didn't rebel. We did. And because of Adam's failure in the garden, everything is thrown into chaos. Now, as far as where people are um, getting all of this from, as far as, you know, hating gay people and all that stuff, first of all, Let's reel it in just for a second, because I, 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 I'd be remiss if I didn't touch on this. You have to admit, there has been an amazing, an amazing um, push by the radical gay agenda in this country. Now, I don't have, you know, look, I'm all for everybody getting along, okay? Your lifestyle is your lifestyle. But you are not to push and force your lifestyle on anybody, and that's what they have done. Now, granted, in what in what way? It, wait, it's wait, all wait, gay wait. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, about, I'm, about to, I'm about to break it down for you right now, my man. Tune in. Here we go. First of all, we know that there were reports in the news in the uh, uh, late to mid '90s of attacks on 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 gays all right like the famous one with the kid who got dragged to death uh, tied to a pickup truck i can't remember his name but you know what i'm talking about we're going to I, I, i'll get into more on the other side of this break you're tuning in to wide awake uh news live with them cat and the vulcan and we'll be back after this commercial welcome back to the wide awake radio show charlie mcgrath uh, is absent and dex and them cat are sitting in on him uh, we're having a uh, an off-topic conversation here about um, about the the Bible and homosexuality and things of that nature. Please understand that the thoughts and opinions here do not necessarily reflect on Wide Awake News staff or Charlie McGrath himself. We're just two guys having a conversation 
going back and forth. But we only so. So, so um, if you if you agree or disagree with us, that's cool. Understand we we just we just chit chatting here because this all comes back to what's happening in our world and in politics today, with and especially in light of this Boston attack. You better believe that uh, they're going to milk this for all it's worth and pass whatever bills they need to pass. So please understand that. Um, we got on this topic because we were talking about the earth changes and what's happening and looking at it from a, a, a biblical perspective, a biblical worldview, um, and trying to also, you know, misspell some of these myths here. Some people think that um, if you're a Christian, that means you have to hate, you know, gay people, what have you. Um, let me just put it out here. I believe that adults should be able to do whatever they want to do. If two gay adults decide they want to get married, fine. The state should be able to do what it wants to do, and the church should be able to do what it wants to do. The church should not dictate to the state. The state should not dictate to the church. That's just how that is. That does not change the fact that the Bible says that homosexuality is a sin, but it, it also says that um, you know backbiting and slander and lying and cheating, all those things are sinful too. Well, the bottom line is it's not singling out one sin or over another. God has already declared in his word that man is sinful. We're all fallen and in need of a savior, in need of salvation. That's the bottom line. So well, that's, I mean, that, 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 that's, that's what he said. A, now, here, go ahead. Here's the thing. Uh, I know that not all Christians hate, or well, people who call themselves Christians hate gay people, uh, but you, you have to understand there's a lot of parts in the Bible that's incredibly anti-gay. And uh, I mean, for example, Levitic, Leviticus uh, chapter 20, uh, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth uh, with a woman, both have committed an abomination. Uh, they shall surely be put to death, and their blood shall be upon them. You know, it's, it's things like that that sort of gives people an impression uh, that this, and uh, if I was to write something like this, then people would say that I was being hateful. You know, so this is where people get the impression that, you know, the Bible is very anti-gay, and then obviously in the, in this religion right here, uh, gay uh, homosexuality is considered to be a sin. My point is, overall, when it comes to state marriage, it should be between two consenting adults, and it, it shouldn't uh, religion shouldn't even play a role in that. You know, it, it's it, people's relig religious beliefs shouldn't play a role in other people's right to get married, and that's just pretty much where I'm coming from. Uh, so uh, we only have about what twelve minutes left in the show, if that. So wow. I sort of, yeah. <laughs> but so, I just want to clarify that the Bible is not anti-gay. Um, well, I mean that, that sounds pretty. That's pretty. An that sounds pretty anti-gay to me. I mean, if a man should lie with it's mankind, not, it's, it's not about that. It's about sin. Understand? Yeah, it, it says it's an abomination, and they should be put to death. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to admit, you got to admit, it sounds pretty hardcore. Well, it was because in, you have to remember in the Old Testament over 6,000 years ago, Israel was under a theocracy. And so God was the king. God was over that nation. All the other nations of the earth had a king. Israel at that time did not. God gave commandments on what was to be done while he was establishing his people. The Jews were God's chosen uh, nationality to bring forth the, the word of God where, where, whereby the son of God would be born uh, to die on the cross to pay for the sins and, re and redeem mankind from the sin of uh, of death, all right? So the curse of sin and death. So that's what that was about. Not that they're better than anybody else or you know, special than anyone. It's not that. Now, the Old Testament, yes. God has already declared what is sinful and uh, applorable in his sight. And yes, God does judge sin, all right? If you want to flip forward in the book of Genesis, you will find that God took out Sodom and Gomorrah because of their debauchery. He took them out. And just like he said in his word, that nothing will ever be able to grow there again. And to this day, that, that place is covered under like 30 feet of ash. Nothing can grow there. It was obliterated. Okay. That is the judgment, God's judgment on sin, not just homosexual lifestyle but any sinful lifestyle in other words and i'll end it with this because we'll go on forever unless a man is born again he will not see god he will not have eternal life all right all human beings are on death row 
And unless you come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ according to the Bible, according to God's word, you will perish in everlasting um, separation from God at death. Period. That that's what the Bible says. So yeah, we have there's there's a lot of things in the Bible that's this hardcore. But understand that God is holy, God is sovereign, and he has declared what he wants. And because he is God and he is sovereign, then he makes the rules and this is what it is. And, you know, either we, you know, are on his side or we're his enemies and we're not on his side. That's what the Bible teaches. That's that's what it says. Now, it's funny that you you brought, you, you mentioned that, that verse, but if you take a look at, if you flip over forward to Romans... Mm -hmm. You see why God put that there. He explains it to you. And he says that for the wrath of God, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who suppress the truth by their unrighteousness. Because what can be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen because they are understood through what has been made. So people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or give him thanks. But they became futile in their thoughts and their senseless hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for an image resembling mortal human beings or birds or full-footed animals or reptiles. Therefore, here's the here's the rub. God gave them over in their desires of their hearts to impurity, to dishonor their bodies among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creation rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to dishonorable passions for the women exchanged the natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. And likewise, the men also abandoned their natural relations with women and were inflamed in their passions for one another. Men committed shameless acts with men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do what should not be done. They are filled with every okay. kind of unrighteousness. That's what God says. So he gave them over. So the fact that man... <laughs> Does not want to acknowledge God. He says, "Fine." Yeah, but I'll there's a lot of there's a lot of different perspectives on what God wants, and a lot of it's, it's, it's coming white, from people. Right it's, well, I mean, it's coming from humans, humans who write that. But I don't want to I don't want to uh, end the show just uh, talking about this part of it because uh, well, I, I, what I try to do with every show that we're on, and so far today we've talked about the, the Boston bombing, we've talked about. Obama's gun control push. We talked about the so-called background check bill really being a, a tactic used to go after gun, the gun rights. We've talked about earth changes. We've talked about traveling into outer space. And we've talked about homosexual marriage, well, homosexuality in the Bible. So just to sort of, <laughs> just to sort of give you guys a little summary, uh, that's, how our, that's how it goes when we're both on air. Uh, we go all over the place, and you know that's one of the things I like about being on the show with you. Uh, we can cover a lot of different topics. I think we're down to like maybe I don't know six minutes or so, if if, if even that, you know. So I, I guess what I try to do at the very end is try to get a summary from you of uh, what are some things we should be looking out in the near future. I and think what, what right can now. We really do? I think right now, believe it or not. Everyone's talking about the market collapsing and the economy collapsing in 30 days, 60 days, whatever. I believe it's, the, it's just the opposite. I don't see any of that happening. And the reason being is because, like I said before, the collapse is not necessarily going to be a financial one per se. I believe it's going to be an outside situation that causes uh, a financial one. And I don't think we're going to be around when that happens, to be quite honest with you. What? I think that's I think that's very far away, my man. Understand, it's things have been what's the word I'm looking for here? Not co opted, but rolled up, controlled, and taken advantage of so that up is down and down is up. In other words, because this is a 
electronic fiat currency system that we're on now sure. and not a paper one, they can do whatever they want for as long as they want and rewrite and make the rules as they go along. Period. So technically speaking, there really is no collapse. What they can do is hamstring everyone and tax us to death and make things harder for us to live our day-to-day -day lives. But as far as a real collapse, per se, that really doesn't exist. You see that in places like Argentina and stuff where they don't put their own currencies, meaning they don't have an electronic source like we do. They're not a world superpower, so they get punked by all the world superpowers. So well, that's let me tell that, you what I think. That's how I, that goes. I think this world reserve currency is going to change. It will no longer be the dollar at some point because there's a lot of countries with incentive to come up with an alternative. And even though we started wars to try to prevent countries from selling oil and euros, even though we tried to prevent uh, Gaddafi from uh, working on a gold-backed currency, at some point Russia and China and other countries are going to come up with a world reserve currency. And uh, when that happens, it's going to be a threat to our system, and I think we will deal with a collapse. But, hey, who knows? You know, I, I, don't, I don't claim to be Nostradamus. Now, all, all we can do is prepare the best that we can, and uh, I guess that's the lesson I have for you guys. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody, to the Wide Awake Show. Um, everyone, be encouraged, be safe, keep your eyes open, be alert, be sober-minded, and by all means, be encouraged.